Hello and welcome to isuredbirdspodcast.com. Uh, I am one of your co-hosts, John Pemberton, a former ISU Redbird player from 1985 to 1990. My other co-host is John Diner, um, became a Redbird fan in fall of 1984 when he started at Illinois State. And hi, John, you're going to wave. And then Steve Fate also joined uh, ISU Faithful Ranks in 1984 and became a fan also. So um, I'd like to uh, thank everybody for listening to our first podcast. Um, I'd like to also call out where you can find us, right? We're on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel out there. We have 30 old games. Uh, we'll be also putting up our podcast out there on uh, the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is ISU Redbirds podcast, original name, and you're going to find it. We use that over and over again for branding. Uh, our website is ISU Redbird Podcast.com. Um, you can also find us out and where your favorite podcasts are at, whether that's out on Apple or Spotify or um, uh, Android, Google Android. So thank you for joining us. Um, we were, we're considered now an off season. So we'll be doing this during the season um, and reviewing upcoming games and previous games and then doing a player, an ex player or a former player interview. Um, today we're doing, um, we're going to be talking about players in the portal. Some of them were sad to see. Um, and then we'll be talking about the three new coaches. So we're going to kick it off talking about players in the portal. John. Reeves in the portal. What do we got to say about that? Um, well, obviously Reeves is the one of our well, the top player for Illinois State this past season. Um, not looking forward to seeing him go. Um, it's going to be a it's going to be really tough for uh, Peden to try and replace uh, all the points and um, everything that Reeves is doing for us on the um, on red on the Redbirds. So uh, really, not a lot to, <laughs> not more to say about that. <clears throat> Other two right. players in the portal. Oh, um, so Alston Andrews uh, are, are big. Um, uh, I don't think uh, he was uh, having any minute, taking very many minutes for us. So I don't think that'll be a, a much of a loss for us. Um, should be easy to find something to replace him. And then um, the other player who left is uh, Abdu Jai. Abdu. Um, toward the end of the season, he was um, starting to pick up, get some minutes. Um, but uh, I, I don't think he'll be as big an impact uh, on the team as uh, obviously what we're, we're losing with Reeves. So, Yeah, look, I actually think the last two players, it's probably better that they're, they're leaving for them. Um, and even for, for uh, you know, Redbird basketball. I mean, one of the things... Uh, uh, the new coach has said is that you know he wants to play through the bigs and uh he, you know andrews and uh abdu i mean i think they're more one-dimensional you know we've seen jai play and uh defensively he's got some skills but i mean offensively he, he's not gonna he can't post up low i mean he he still likes to shoot the three out there you know occasionally let that thing fly you and know, that and, drives me nuts yeah and neither one of them are really uh, um, great offensively, as as well as and not just scoring, but like you know getting that ball, passing it back out to get the inside outside game. So, um, you know, if, if Pidon is really committed to uh, bringing in bigs and stuff like that, it, it's probably best that that those two uh, move on, not only for them but 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 for the team as well. Yeah, Reeves, different story. You know, um, he was he was the. So the player that could generate a shot for himself, okay, and, and uh, not not only scoring, but he, you know he was a captain too. So you know from from a leadership standpoint, you'll be losing that. And just by all the interest that's out there, you know, um, from Duke, Kentucky, Arkansas, oh, God. <laughs> there's other people that are, gonna, that are showing some interest, and, and we'll see ultimately where he lands. I, I don't think it'll be, you know, Arkansas is bringing all these big name players in and, and you know Duke Kentucky Blue Bloods I, I think you know something like perhaps like Wisconsin or Marquette uh, um, I know Marquette hasn't been mentioned but I think that actually would be a good fit with him uh, up there in Shaka smart land and a little chaos and they'd like to do one-on-one -on -one, uh, um, offensively 
Um, they've mentioned DePaul. I don't think that's a big upgrade from, from Illinois State, given their, you know, perhaps a better conference. Uh, agreed. Easy, agreed. But, but not, not an upgrade to Illinois State. So I think he'll do better than DePaul, and, and I don't think it will be Duke. And I'm almost wondering. And I'm, I'm willing to take a bet on that one too. <laughs> if I'm, if I'm, no take. If I'm here. wrong, congratulations, to Antonio. Yeah. <laughs> one, do, do we do we give you a bet? You a dollar he doesn't end up at Kentucky. I mean, I don't see him at Kentucky either. Um, because I hate DePaul ever since they beat us when they didn't beat us on the three pointer. So you know, um, um, the the one thing I'm wondering is. Are you going to start to see like you do in the NBA where players now become friends through the AA circuit and start to go and join up at different colleges, right? Because of this free one-time transfer thing allows you to kind of move wherever you want, right? And so... You're um, kind of already seeing that, right? So uh, um, Kent, who was with Bradley, right, enters the portal. A week and a half later, he ends up at Indiana State playing with his, I forget the, the other player's name, but his buddy from Oak Forest uh, is at Indiana State. So now transferring within the conference. Yeah, but he loses. Up. But that Micah Thompson's going in. I mean, he averaged nine points. you got Simon Willer, Wilbard. He averaged, you know, almost four points a game. Um, I'm really surprised they're big that uh, Darion Tucker – who I watched play in the NCAA tournament the year before for Oregon State. He did not produce for Indiana State. I was surprised. Um, I thought I thought he would have provided more for them than that. Um, kind of like the the guy that went to, and I just realized this. I was looking when we were looking at the portal, the Vel, uh, the Loyola guy that played at Indiana and did pretty well, and then went to uh, Loyola. I saw he's not on our list yet. Um, we'll have to update the spreadsheet. We kind of have a spreadsheet going. So, all right. Well, that is a good kickoff for players and the bummer that Antonio's going. He'd be a great cornerstone to build for for the 2022-23 season. So then let's move on over, and Steve's going to kick it off talking about the coaches. Yeah, see, so you got Coach Peden, um announced his hiring, I don't know if it was minutes after the uh, Redbirds lost in uh, St. Louis, but... Uh, we were in St. Louis for that. <laughs> it, it, it was very close afterwards. Very interesting. Uh, you know, the timing. I mean, the, the guys had to be sitting in the locker room when, when you know, that was announced. So, uh, um, um, but you know, I think, uh, you know, listening to him, you know, he's saying a lot of the, the right things. You know, and, and some of that is, you know, coaches' rhetoric and stuff like that. But... Uh, He's sticking to his guns on, on, on some things, you know, about, you know, the current players only wanting them. He's not going to sell it to them. If they want to stay, you know, in the right fit, then, then uh, you know, I think they're more than welcome. And I think they're going through that pro, uh, process right now. Um, we kind of hit it on it before, you know, probably more of an emphasis on, on, on you know, bigs and, and playing inside out, which, which to me is a, it's a welcome Welcome news. Uh, I would love to see that. I have a little, little, uh, little uh, passion for the being in the post and seeing some, 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 some good post play. That would be awesome. And I think the one thing, uh, if you look at, um, you know, which is interesting, and he's kind of taking stuff from Ohio State, is, uh, you know, they kind of mentioned like, and John, you could probably talk about this more. We can, but. Like historically, uh, the coaches would rotate. Um, Coach A would take the, you know, the next team and scout, right? And then right. the, the second coach would be doing the second game out, and the third coach would be doing that. Right. They're talking more like almost like a football scenario where you have an offensive coordinator, a defensive coordinator, you know, kind of that approach. I don't know if that's a trend in, in, in basketball, but you know, I found it interesting. And he was obviously. Uh, you know, it's been talked about. He was in charge of the offense for Ohio State. And if you look at the stats the last two years, you know, obviously, uh, it's a, you know, part of the Big Ten, you know, probably great for recruiting. But nevertheless, you know, top 25 offensively uh, um, in offensive efficiency, which is great, right? So that means you're not just scoring, okay, but, you, but 
each possession, uh, you, you're scoring well. Now, the yeah. number of possessions aren't as high, but the efficiency is up there. Yeah, and, and when I played three decades ago, um, you know, the, each coach would come in and, you know, the, if it was Coach AJ or Coach Cunningham or Mark Zwart or whoever, right, they would be gone all of a sudden for like a day or two because they would a lot of times go scout in person that the team and then watch a lot of tape and then they would come back in and they'd talk to us and be like, oh, um, you know, let's take Bradley, right, with Massive Mike. Massive Mike is, you know, 6'10 and he's 250 and he's going to, in the post, he can go right and left, right? We always knew if he can go right or go left, you know, uh, the Redbirds of the 80s were so well drilled. Um, a lot of times we made up for the lack of athleticism because we knew where you were going to go before you knew. And so I could get to that spot ahead of people that were 10 times quicker than I was. Um, and so I'm going to be interested to watch how that went, right? Because even under, because Donald, we had a motion offense and under Bender, they called sets. Um, and, you know, Billy or Coach Lowenthal, they would call a set. They'd stand up and call a set out, right? And, and ours were all cities at the time, Boston, New York, you know, um, uh, Atlanta, Chicago, L.A., right? So our set was based on a city name. Um, and players could call them too, right? That was a nice, nice thing under Bender. Um, I do have a great story about getting my butt chewed for calling over riding on the court, threatening my boy Randy Blair that <laughs> I would, we're, we're going to Boston. And Boston basically had two, um, and I bumped my camera, but had two people in the bottom block and then Gerard and I would be in the uh, high post and we'd um, go down, set down screens, they'd pop out and then I would go over to Gerard's side and then we'd set a double screen and bring Ricky across. And uh, we were uh, uh, playing Southern at home. And uh, so Freddie McSwain had just picked up his fourth foul offensive charge. Richard Thomas had done a wonderful job. and. Uh, they're calling L.A. and I look at Randy, we're running down the court because I ain't bound the ball. I'm like, we're running Boston, we're running Boston. And so, you know, I'm yelling Boston and, and Bender's pissed. And he's just he about ready to hang me by my toes. And <laughs> we run Boston, of course, go down, down screen. Rick pops out on the, on the weak side, ball kicks over to uh, Richard Thomas. We double, double screen for him. He comes across. Well, Freddie's trailing that whole dang play. It's just a nasty play if set up right and, and Ricky gets the ball on the block and goes right through him and lays up a three point play. And so Bender Yank, you know, subs me out and he's just chewing me out. And uh, of course, Billy walks up and taps him on the shoulder and he's like, not now, I'm giving Pepper the business and he, did. And, and he points at the scoreboard and he looks and there's the number one player walking off the court with two minutes to go. Freddie McSwain is out, right? He got his fifth foul. And so it just was a, you know, a great situation. And so, but yeah, um, inside out, you know, it, it, you got to have a big that can do that. And Loyola has proven, um, you know, they, they did that with, uh, oh, what was the big boy's name? Crookwick. Um, Crookwick, yeah, yeah. So, um, and, and, you know, I wasn't a huge fan of the kid from uh, uh, Missouri State who's a fifth year senior. Arc on his shot was like nine miles in the sea, you know, the <laughs> thing, but it went in. You got to give the man credit. So, all right. At this point now, we'd be kicking over to talking to a former player. Our former player is going to be blah, blah, blah. And then we'd talk to them, right? And we'd bring them in and we'd talk to them. You'll know who it's going to be. You can ask questions. Pretty much going to stick to. You know, tell me, you know, give me your top three things, right? And then when he gives us the top three, we'll write them down and we'll talk about the first one and the second one and third one. And then we're maybe done. how they, so, you're gonna ask how they got the to one. Illinois State. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Any question you want to ask, right? Yeah, that's so, a good question in general, I think. Yeah. Those are good. You, get you come up with good State. stories. Yeah. And Dan used yeah, to ask you guys what the what your be favorite three games were or something yeah, like absolutely. that, too. Yep. So we'll have those questions and I'll kind of put a name by it so that you can ask that question, right? And so we can go from there. Um, and then we'll just work on close, right? So thank you for listening to episode one of the ISU Redbirds podcast .com. Remember, you can find us out on YouTube. Uh, you can find us on our website, www 
uh, isuredbirdspodcast.com and look for our podcast out in Amazon and our uh, iPhones and Android and Spotify. And thank you very much and goodbye. And then I hit stop.